Hika, hika, hika. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you on how to convert a prop file into Wadado. That way, you can be able to have some custom props for your VTuber setup. Now, before we get started with this tutorial, you need to know how to set up the Wadado SDK and prepare this exact Unity project. If you don't know how to set this up, then by all means, please go to the description below. Please look at that tutorial and then come back when you are finished. As that tutorial explains how do you actually do the installation process, which is very quick and easy, but also goes over the overview of the Wadado SDK. So that way you get a little bit more familiar of what are some important things to keep in mind for the SDK. Otherwise, though, I will still re-elaborate some things here, but just keep in mind watch that tutorial first as it'll probably make more sense as we continue. Now, once you have this Unity project file already set up and everything like that, the first the first thing we're going to be needing in order to get this process all going, besides the setting up the SDK, is we need to have a prop file, which has to be FBX. You cannot, you're not talking about GLB, STL, day files. We're not talking about any other crazy file formats. We're talking specifically about FBX. Now, there are two methods you can go along with this. You can either A, model your own with Blender, or you can download one from either TurboSquid, Sketchfab, Boost, Gumroad, VRC Mods. There's a lot of different websites you can download an FBX file from. So if you are going to be downloading an FBX file from somewhere else, you're already good to go. You can kind of skim through until I start explaining the setup. But for Blender users, though, if you are a Blender user, if you have modeled your prop in Blender and all of that stuff, what you are going to do is you're going to go to File, you're going to Export, and click on FBX. Then you're going to make sure that, you know, you name your FBX accordingly to what you want. Make sure that the Apply Scaling is set to FBX All, and that your Apply Transform is set to be enabled. Otherwise, you could mess with these other settings if you know what you're doing. If your model happens to be rigged, I recommend leaving the leaf bones on. Otherwise, you could have it disabled if you want, if you have custom leaf bones but to each their own, but this thing here is very important to have, so make sure you set these up accordingly. And then make sure to click on Export FBX. And once you have that, you can simply go into Unity. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our mod. The mod is very important for our setup for Waterdo. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Waterdo, click on New Mod, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to whatever name that we want. It could be my prop, it could be Box, whatever we want, you know, and we're going to create mod. Now, this is important that we have this mod folder because this is what Waterdo will be exporting per item. So again, like I mentioned in the other tutorial, we'll have a mod for our avatar. We'll have a mod for another avatar or a mod for this prop, a mod for another prop or other crazy stuff, you know, just to keep things a little understandable for, for us. So once you have the folder made for this one prop in particular, depending on what you're making, what we're going to then do is that for the case that we have, we're going to go ahead and, you know, for the FBX file, as you can see here, as you can see, we're going to make sure to click and drag. If there's a texture folder, make sure to drag the texture folder. But for the box FBX, as you can see here, make sure that this is click and dragged over to the folder that you've made in Waterdo, as you can see. What you're going to then do is that when once your FBX file is in here, you're going to click on the FBX file, you're going to click on model, and then I'd say before we go through the other things, click and drag your prop file over to here, the hierarchy, and make sure that once you have it there, if the file happens to be a bit too big, Make sure that you use scale factor. I personally recommend messing with this. So if you have like an item that's too big, you can set the scale factor to be like 0 0.2, 0 0.1, depending on how big or small it is. You can reference the height, by the way, by right clicking on the hierarchy, clicking on 3D object and cube, and you can reference the scale, make sure that the position is set to 0, 0, 0. And you can use this to kind of reference how big you may want your item to be so it fits but otherwise though do keep in mind you can always change the scaling anyway so even if you accidentally export the prop too big or too small in you know for water though you can still always adjust it there's always a way to fix that so don't be don't be too nervous or don't be alarmed if the box happens or your prop happens to be too big in water though you can always fix it so 
Once you have your file and you set the scale factor, make sure that read and write is set to enable so the SDK can read the file properly. And then make sure that you have legacy blend shape normals enabled, If especially if you, mainly if you have blend shapes on your model, like a VTS pog pet, make sure that this is set to enabled. Otherwise you don't have to if there is no blend shapes, but I usually have it on, but usually for blend shapes. But click on here, click apply, and then Make sure that your rig is set to generic. Please don't set it to humanoid. There is literally no need for it. It's a prop. So just leave it as generic. You can go to materials over here and click on extract materials over here. We can go ahead and select on select folder. And then over here, you can be able to configure your materials however you want. Now, I will say you can have custom shaders however you want. Poyomi, Lil Tune, Real Tune, whatever you want. Now, keep in mind, if you are on the... You know, if you are using the main Wadido, which as you can see on the top right of my Wadido, as you can see here, it says Wadido Pro. This, if you ha are a Wadido Pro user, you can use URP or Universal Rendering Pipeline. That's for more advanced users. You can always contact Tiger if you have questions about Wadido Pro or if you are someone that needs to use URP for like realistic stuff or if you have a specific shader goal contact Tiger about that. But for the main, you know, for most users with Wadido, I always would use the built-in render pipeline shader. So if you're gonna get a shader from the internet or something like that, make sure it works with built-in render pipeline. You can also just get VR chat shaders just to keep it simple for your brain. Just look up VR chat shaders and those should also work well with Waterdome pretty much. If you do code if you do custom coding for your own shaders, you can also use that too as long as it works with the render pipeline that, you know, depending on what you know what you're using. Are you a pro user or a non-pro? But just to avoid confusion, stick with VR chat shaders, keep it simple. So for the case that we want to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Poyomi to demonstrate. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this random Unity package over here and make sure to click on import. Give it some time for it to properly import Poyomi so that way you can be able to have custom shaders for your prop. And again, this applies for other shaders. So once you have your custom shader imported into Unity, what you're going to then do, select your materials, you can set it to Poyomi or Lil Tune or whatever shader you imported, and then you can configure it to however you want. I don't, right now in the making of this tutorial, I don't have like, and even if in the making of this tutorial, I don't really have a shader recommendation. Cause it really depends on per person what shader goals if you're realistic shading or toon style or soft cell or realistic anime or whatever crazy stuff honestly all i can say is just you do you on what you want for your shader goals so let me see shading over here i'm going to set this as shade map set this and then set to be like that there you go Something quick and simple, box with a tune look. So once you have that, you know, you set up your materials however you want. What you're going to then do is, depending on the, depending on what you want to do with a prop. Now, if you're going to have this as like a throwable or something like that, I heavily recommend adding a box collider to the prop once you've added to the hierarchy. This will allow it so that way when you, the box hits your character, it will actually hit you instead of going through you. So make sure to add a box collider. But otherwise though, if you don't, if this is supposed to be something like holdable, like you want to hold it, you don't have to add the collider. You can have the collider, but note that when you import it as, you know, when you load as a prop in water though, by default, the collider won't be detected. For the throw, the throw note, it should be detected, but for a normal prop, it won't be unless you activate it, which again, depending on what you want to do with it, you know, what you want to do with the collider and all that, but... Either way, for now, we're just going to leave it as having a box collider. You can add physics, like spring bones, if you want to add some movement. You just simply add component, type in spring bones, and you just add whatever you want and stuff. So, you know, go crazy. Again, don't don't feel limited. Think of like a VR chat model. Well, not, not like it. Well, for this case, it's a prop file. But just think like VR chat where it's like your brain can go crazy pretty much. Go, go wild. But not too crazy, depending on what you exactly want to add because there may be some components that maybe if you're an even crazier user you may want to contact tiger regarding support for it on the asset bundle but for the most part pretty much almost everything almost everything especially like with what vtubers use 
should be support. Custom shaders, custom animations, custom particles, which, heck, I can even add particle to this as well. Like, particle, which this is especially nice if you, let's say, for example, want a prop and you want to have it with particles and stuff. You can literally do this and boom, you can have a particle with it. So, yeah, just let your, you know, just have fun, you know? That's all I can really much say. But either way, though, with that in mind, what we're going to then do... Let's see, I'm just going to set this to a blue color. And once you have your stuff set up already, you know, however you want, what you can then do is you can click and drag over to your mod, the mod folder that you've made. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on Original Prefab here. I'm going to right click, click on Rename, and you're going to name it to Prop. You have to rename it to Prop, otherwise this thing ain't going to export. Because when it comes to what the Wadido SDK, pretty much Wadido SDK will not care about anything but the Prefab file. So literally, I can have this folder be contained with hundreds of stuff in here. And if there ain't no Prefab name pr Prop like this, it ain't going to export anything. So make sure you have a prefab once you click and drag from hierarchy over here. And make sure you name this to prop just like this. That way it can export. Once you have that, you can go into Wadudo. You can go into mod settings. And you can set up your settings however you want. Pretty much. You can set up a description. This is especially good if you have... If you want to like, you know, give it to clients. Or upload on the Steam Workshop. This is really nice. And we also need to make sure, so mod asset directory is set up by default if you've done the new mod thing. However, though, with the mod expert directory, it is not available by default, which I heavily recommend setting one up. In order to set one up, you can just click on the button over here, and then you can scroll until, you know, you find the Wadido data folder with the props. If you have no idea what the frick this this file path is here's how you can access it real quickly you can go to you know have water to open which I recommend having water to open and you click on the paw over here click on open data folder and once your file explorer pops up I heavily recommend you know going back to water the data here right click on the streaming assets folder and making a quick access here this will be very nice especially if you're going to export a lot of things very often because you're going to have to tell every time a new mod is made that that's going to be the export directory so for the case of props we have to have it in the prop folder so make sure to click on select folder and then once you have that give unity some time which i think my unity is acting a little silly so let me go ahead and do that. Select folder. Actually, let me go ahead real quickly and force it to read it. One second. So I'll copy paste that. Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's reading now. All right. That's fine. All right. Excuse my unity. But either way, you should have the export directory like so here. And then once you have your mod settings properly set up, what you're going to then do is you're going to go into Wadido and you're going to build the mod. And give it some time for it to process and everything like that. And, you know, it should take... It should be pretty quick depending on how the setup is. If there's a crazy amount of stuff, it may take longer. But since this is literally just a box with a particle, it shouldn't really take that long. So, there you go. Your file export should pop up showing you that, hey, the file has been successfully exported otherwise if this file explorer does not pop up that means it probably failed so what you're going to then do in in water though you're going to then click on the plus button add a prop you're going to then go into the preview gallery or source and click on the prop that you have made and as you can see we have a box with a freaking particle on it so really really cool stuff you can even of course if it's too big you can scale it however you want so I can make a tinier box I can even rotate to whatever I want and stuff so really cool Woo. freaking particles in the air so yeah there you go and pretty much you can even set this prop to be like a throwable so you can do that by going to the plus button here clicking on uh, clicking on adding the blueprint here like so and then adding the throw prop at character node here you can, of course, you can check out my redeem tutorial that goes over, like, how you do redeem stuff. But just to quickly show you in a nutshell, though, let's say we're going to do something like this. I'm going to set these to character, both of these, and then set this to be the box. I can be able to have it so 
every time something's thrown, my character falls into infinity. As you can see, there you go. But yeah, but again, you for more information about how you can set up redeems and other crazy stuff, I've already made a tutorial on how to do redeem, so you can definitely check out that tutorial because that one explains everything. But otherwise, though, that's pretty much how you can create custom props for beginners. And I hope that this tutorial was very informative. And let me know if you have any issues. But otherwise, I heavily recommend joining the Waterdo Discord server because we do have some helpers that are very active in the server that are willing to help you out. They're very big nerds and they're happy to help you out on your Waterdo setup. And of course, you can even probably get some assets in the Waterdo Discord server as well. But either way, though, Feel free to let me know if you have any questions, though. I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership. So if you want to further support this channel and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake members. Otherwise, though, just your support means so much to me, and I appreciate every ounce of it. Either way, though, with that being said, though, hey, 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 goodbye, bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye.